Today in this video we are going to look at ways to keep your personal information safe on the internet. With me today is our head of video marketing Martin Chandley a former information security engineer. Hi Martin, thank you for joining us today. Thanks Beatrice. Staying safe on the internet is a matter of taking simple precautions and we will look at some simple steps you can take to keep yourself and your family safe online. I think you mentioned to me earlier that there are three ways to help keep us safe online. Yes, that's right. The first of these is your passwords. And I shall tell you how to keep data safe by looking after your passwords by following the guidelines I'm about to give. Always use different passwords for each site you sign into. Store your passwords in a password manager such as Bitwarden or MyKey. Change your passwords every 90 days or sooner if you can. Whenever possible, use two-step authentication. If you follow these four steps, you should never have data stolen in a data breach. That's good to know. Do you have more advice for us? I do, Beatrice. When you go to a website which looks a bit dodgy or suspicious, or you get an email which demands you contact someone urgently, look at the URL or the links to, to supposed safe sites embedded in the email. Can you explain a bit more, Martin, for those of us who are not techies? Yes, of course. Let's take a look at a scam that was a popular for a while back in the day. As you can see, this is a web page allegedly from a well-known American bank. They were asking for the user to fill in the details. It looks genuine and filling and sending the return form would have exposed the account and the other details to the scammers. But if we hover over the URL, you'll see that it's not from the bank. So always double check URLs and links before you click on them, simply by hovering over the URL. Thanks, Martin. You have one last thing to talk about. Yes, and it's my favourite. Imagine visiting a website. You get the usual pop-up asking for you to accept their privacy policy, but you don't want to read it or have the time. But there is a solution. But first, let's look at what happens when you visit a website. You find your website and things start to happen. The website starts collecting data about you such as location, income, age, hobbies, politics and belief. The website then passes on or sells this information to social media, to analytics companies or to advertisers. You find your website and once the connection is set, little packets of data are sent across from the website server to your computer. These packets of data contain information and instructions to your computer which will respond by returning packets filled with the personal information the website wants to collect. These little packets are called cookies. Websites that collect data this way are supposed to inform you what they collect and what they use it for or what they do with it. This is why you need to read the privacy policy. I don't know about you, but I just want to use the website. And I don't want to sit and read a long document filled with legal flummery. I agree. I hate those annoying pop-ups. This is what privacy does. Martin, what is privacy? Can you tell us more? Yeah, for sure. Privacy sits quietly in the background and reads the privacy policy on each site you visit. It will warn you if there is anything of concern or that you may need to take action over. That's really useful, I'm already loving it. Privacy keeps your data and that of your families safe when they are online. So, if you care about your private personal data remaining private, you need to download Privacy today. Visit the link in the description below.